Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Exciting day here at Art of the Image. I know we're all waiting for the Nikon mirrorless announcements, but in the meantime, I've got a Nikon camera to review. The D7500, it's been out for a little while, but I haven't had it here for review yet, so I'm excited to get this baby uh, out of the box and um, show you guys what it can do. Uh, play with it, take some shots, do some video. Uh, basically, we're just doing an ongoing review of it because this is, um, for those of you that don't know, the D7500, we've got essentially a baby D500 here. Now, the D500 is Nikon's top-end DX or APS-C body. In other words, crop sensor, 1.5 uh, times multiplier um, on the sensor as compared to 35 millimeter full frame. Um, and this gives you most of the goodness of a D500 for a less price in an arguably smaller and lighter body. Not that much smaller and lighter, but, you know, more of a value-priced DSLR. Now, you can probably see I've got this out here behind the box. So I've, I've already pulled this out of the box. I haven't had the camera and everything out yet, but I pull out the charger and the battery, as I usually do, and threw it on the charger so that we have um, a charged battery. Because actually, today I'm going to get out and do some shooting with this so I can start to show you what it's capable of. Let's get it out of the box. D7500, 20 megapixel DSLR. We've got uh, warranty cards, manuals up top there, as usual. Below we have, this is the kit too. This is the 18 to 140 kit. So that lens will be in here. So here's our body right here. Wrapped in some bubble wrap, a little protective sleeve. This camera looks like it's brand new. We've still got tags on it. So a lot of times when you get a camera in for review, um, depending on where you get it in from review from, if I get it in from B&H or something, it's usually brand new off the shelf. Um, often if you're borrowing them straight from the manufacturer like Nikon, somebody else has already reviewed it. But as you can see, this one's brand new. We got tags, we got stickers on it. Fantastic. It's always nice to have a brand new camera in here. What else do we have? We've got a camera strap, eyepiece, got a uh, USB cable, and then right here we have our 18 to 140 lens. Now I'm kind of excited too because I'm trying to remember, I must have had the 18 to 140 in before. I'm just trying to remember what I would have had it in with. Maybe the 5600. Um, not the 3400, because I think that was an 18 to 55 kit that came with it. Anyways, this may be, possibly, the first time I've had the 140 in for review. So, 18 to 140, small, lightweight. It's not a internal zoom. It's an external zoom, which is what you would expect from um, a kit lens. Um, build quality is decent. Zoom ring, not the smoothest zoom ring I've ever felt, but typical of this uh, level of, of um, lens, um, nicely built, nice, uh, actually the tactile grip on the Nikon rubber is always nice. There's the front element, we've got a 67mm uh, front element, so not too big, not the smallest one, but again, we've got a 140 here, so this is a decent walk around lens. This is one of my top recommended Nikon um, best value lenses in the sense of if you're going to buy the 7500, you might as well get the kit and get this with it. Because um, unless you have a specific need for, say, a 2.8, like a Sigma or something, 17 to 50, um, this is a great all-around lens to go with it. And then you can use this for most applications and um, add a long and a wide and a fast prime, such as a 50. And then you got a good standard kit, similar to what I um, spell out with the uh, the Canons. We've got the 4, uh, the 10 to 18, the 50 F1.8 STM, the... Um, 18 to 135, so this would be very equivalent, 18 to 140, and then the 55 to 250. So if I was to do that in Nikon, just to give you a quick rundown, that would be the 18 to 140, the 50 F1.8G, um, probably their 10 to 24, the new DX, I think it's a 10 to 24, the AFP, and uh, then on the long side, probably wouldn't be a 55, uh, although we do have, what, the 55 to 300, I believe. So that would probably be my set right there. In any case, this is the camera. And we're going to have to go through and put the battery in and uh, set it up because it's going to come out with, um, you know, you put a fresh battery in a brand new camera. It's going to want all the setup for language and whatnot. I should point out the 7500 does not have a fixed screen. It doesn't have a full very angle screen, which is what I would have preferred. 
It's what probably should have happened. Something similar, like just out of the parts bin for the 55 or the 5600 would have been sweet on here. But at least we do have a flip out screen with various movable positions. Um, not my favorite, but again, better than um, a, a, a fixed screen, which is what we would have, say, on a 7200. So let's get the um, 140 on here so you can see what it looks like. Line up our marks, and there we go. I guess what I should do, I've been talking about the lens, but the camera has very nice fit and finish. Some people talk about how you need the upper end cameras for durability and ruggedness. This level of camera um, from even the 3400 is very solidly built, but once you're into the 55, 5600, once you're into the 7000 series, the 7100, the 7200, this, this the 7500, very solid built cameras. Are they all metal? No, but unless you're going to beat these, use them as a hammer or something. I, I mean, I've never broke one myself. I've never, I've, I've, I've never, I've seen people drop these. They've fallen off a tripod or out of their hand and no visible damage to the camera. If anything, the only thing you're probably going to damage is your, is your lens. And that's the argument for using a filter. I, I, I just tend to say use a hood so you don't obstruct your lens with a filter. But basically what I'm saying is the Build quality on these is very, very good. And this this fits perfectly in line. I like the layout of it. As I said, really my only complaint here, the buttons, joystick, everything's good. It feels Nikon, looks Nikon. We've got the dual command dials. We've got the one in the back and the one in the front. So that's an advantage of these upper level bodies where you've got a dedicated dial for shutter and a dedicated dial for aperture, which I tend to prefer. But I'm okay with a body like the 55 or the 56 where you're, you're toggling. But um, very nice body. Very similar to, say, a 7200. Uh, if you're used to that style of body, you're going to get that here. The big, the big deal is you get, you get the, um, the pull-out um, LCD. But you also get with this, as I said, this is a baby D500. It's 4K. So we've got 4K on here. We're going to be playing with that. Um, the big thing that um, you're not going to get out of here, even though it's 4K, is you don't get something like Canon's dual pixel AF system. So it's not going to be the smoothest um, constant video autofocus, but setting it up on a tripod and shooting something like this would be perfectly fine. So it just depends on what your needs are, what you're trying to shoot. Um, let's, uh, this, still, this, this level of camera still has a built-in flash in the body as opposed to some of the higher end ones where you don't get the built-in flash. And, you know, people argue that either way as far as is that an advantage or is that just a pro body. But we've got, um, let me see here. Why are we not popping up our flash here? Probably because I don't have the settings set here. So, All right, so it was stopping me because I was in auto. I just switched it into program mode. Well, when you're in auto, you really don't get any control of the camera. So I just switched it over to P, program mode, and now you can see we can pop up the flash. So there's your, your flash, which um, I'm going to double check, but I'm almost certain that this built-in flash can be used as a speed light commander. So that is one of the advantages. Even if you don't want to use this flash, as a flash per se, in other words, to add light to your exposure, you can pop it up and use it as a commander for off-camera speed lights. So if you want to put a couple 700s, a couple of the 500s, um, the various Nikon speed lights off and about, you can use them as commanders. And I believe this will still command some of the off-camera brand speed lights like the Godox and the Niwer and the Yongnu um, because if they've got the command slave function built in, I think... They will function with the Nikon system. Got to double check that too. Um, and in fact, maybe I'll get one of those in for review and see how it works with um, using a Commander um, Nikon or just the built-in flash as Commander. So anyways, you can see the batteries are in now. I did take a second to set it up because it was locking me out until with the screen because it wanted to be set up. So we just set the time. Uh, we set the date format we set our region so we set it to for us new york toronto um, and uh, we're ready to go so i'm going to be out shooting with this today so i'm excited to get that going uh, i do i got one more lens in with this to show you so stay tuned for the next video um, if you guys have any questions about the 7500 leave them in the comments below i'll see if i can get to them i see if i get them answered for you for something i don't know i can check with nikon um, but I'm excited to get out in the field and uh, try this. If you have a 7500 uh, or you've shot with one or you've owned one, um, let us know in the comments below what's your experience with the 7500. How do you like it? Uh, 
pros, cons, let us know. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Um, if you have any tips or things you want to point out for me, happy to see that too. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks.